Travis Cook here, uh, just relaxing a little bit on the deck, having a couple of cocktails, and really, I guess that's all any of us are allowed to do these days. Uh, but I did want to uh, give a message out there to the fans who have been following uh, me and who are interested in what myself and the Travis Cook organization is up to right now in terms of professional wrestling. Uh, you know, wrestling's like any other business. Uh, even in times of a pandemic or even in times when things aren't uh, necessarily operating, the business still goes on. There are still things that have to be addressed and taken care of, and I've been working on a number of things in that regard. So I wanted to bring you all up to speed on uh, some of those some of those exciting and important items that are taking place with the Travis Cook organization, even as uh, local wrestling shows don't seem to be taking place. The first thing I wanted to address was a rumor that was going around uh, earlier in the year before everything kind of uh, was halted. Uh, and I don't think I ever addressed it publicly, so I'll address it now. Uh, first of all, that rumor was that Attila Khan, the international bounty hunter, was on his way back to St. Louis, was on his way back to SICW. Well, I can confirm for you that, yes, that is true. Attila Khan is on his way back. In fact, he's already here. And he's here for one reason and one reason only. That one reason is Ricky Cruz. Back in 2019, Attila Khan and Ricky Cruz had a match that was the damnedest fight you'd ever want to see between two men. A knockdown, drag out slugfest. It went all over the building. The blood flowed like wine that evening. And Attila Khan just didn't feel like he got the satisfaction he wanted in that match. So he's come back to take care of Ricky Cruz once and for all. Now, that puts me uh, in a little bit of a tough spot. Because, because uh, Attila Khan, uh, he doesn't understand polite society the way you and I do. He doesn't understand what a pandemic is. Stay-at-home orders are something that just doesn't compute for him. He doesn't get any of this. You can't really communicate those things to him in a way that he understands them. And it's getting harder and harder for him to understand why he can't get Ricky Cruz. So the message I'd give to anybody who's in charge of the decision making for whether or not wrestling events get put on, uh, whether they're promoters or governors or mayors or executives or whatever, I just would like to let you know that um, you'd probably better put on a wrestling show sooner than later, because I don't know how much longer I can hold Attilicon back. I mean, I think we all agree it would be better for Attilicon and Ricky Cruz to uh, be matched in a uh, wrestling match at a wrestling show in a quasi-civilized environment in front of officials and a paying crowd and all of that, uh, because if it doesn't happen, you see, Attila Khan's going to go find Ricky Cruz, and it won't happen in a civilized way. He might go find him in a parking lot somewhere, or in a back alley, or at one of those Mexican restaurants somewhere, or the front yard of his house. It won't matter. It's, it's going to happen one way or the other. So either we can do this the civilized way, in a ring in front of a crowd and a paying where we can charge people for tickets for it, or it could just happen in the street somewhere. That's something you folks in charge need to think about. Now there's another issue that, that arose right before wrestling stopped that, that needs to be addressed as well, and um, that's an issue regarding the SICW Tag Team Championship. You see, Gary Jackson and Gil Rogers, the current tag team champions, had a title match with two of my men, the King Christopher Hargis and the talented Ken Casa. And in that match, Hargis and Casa got a pinfall victory in a championship match over Rogers and Jackson. However, Flash Flanagan came down, planted a foreign object into the ring, and convinced the referee, who wasn't that bright to begin with, that we brought the foreign object in. Of course, we did not. And so the referee uh, forced the match to continue, and uh, we were denied the tag team championship. So clearly the claim that Jackson and Rogers have to the tag team championship is specious at best. It is disputed to say the very least. But then you add to that, that is, as I look at the record books here, Gil Rogers and Gary Jackson have not defended the tag team championship in the 30 days required by SICW bylaws. In fact, as I look at the 
the record and the calendar and so forth, they have not defended the tag team championship in two and a half months. So not only do they have a a very shaky claim to the title to begin with because they were beaten in a title match, but now they won't even defend the belts. So it's clear that Gil Rogers and uh, Gary Jackson need to be stripped of the SICW Tag Team Championship. Furthermore, the fact that Chris Hargis and Ken Casa cleanly pinned them in a championship match further indicates that Hargis and Casa need to be awarded the Tag Team Championship. There doesn't need to be a tournament or anything like that. We can just uh, you know, send the belts over and everything will be righted. So uh, I think that that's a, a message for Herb Simmons for what you need to do this week. You need to go into the office. I don't know how frequently you've been there lately, but you need to go in the office and you need to officially strip, hard, uh, strip Gil Rogers and Gary Jackson of the Tag Team Championship. Get the belts from them. Put them in a FedEx box. Send them to me. I'll make sure that they get to to Hargis and Casa, because if you don't, I'm going to be meeting with my legal beagles this week, and we'll start the process, the legal process, for hauling you into court where the title can be stripped. It's going to happen one way or the other. You can either do it the easy way or the hard way, but one way or the other, Chris Hargis and Ken Casa are going to be your tag team champions. Now, finally, there's one other issue I want to clear up, kind of a, a misconception, I guess, that's been going around. While we've been off... I've seen a lot of uh, posts on the internet and a lot of messages from people saying that they can't wait for Flash Flanagan, Flash Flanagan to come back in uh, January of 2021. Well, I, I, I think you're misunderstanding something. Um, when I defeated Flash Flanagan in a Loser League Town match back in January of this year, 2020, uh, the length of time for the Loser League Town was, yes, one year. That's what was in the contract. However, SICW has not been in operation now for two and a half, almost three months. So that time period cannot be credited to Flash Flanagan on his suspension. It's got to be added on to the end. That's the only thing that's fair and legal. So by my calculation at this point, as of right now, Flash Flanagan would not be eligible to come back until April of 2021. And if it's another month or two or three or whatever before we, we start back up again, you'd have to add that time on uh, to that suspension as well. So I just wanted to clear that up and make sure nobody was under the false impression that they'll see Flash Flanagan in January of 2021. You won't. Uh, he's not eligible, eligible to come back until right now, April of 2021 and maybe longer. But let's be clear about one thing. Let's be honest about one thing if we could. Even if Flash Flanagan were... Um, eligible to come back in January or April or even today, it, it wouldn't really matter because I don't think he'd come back anyway. You see, when I wrestled Flash Flanagan, I beat him half to death. I gave him the beating of his life. I gave him a worse beating than Savio Vega ever gave him, a worse beating than Randy Orton ever gave him. I pulled him through his hoop. I took him from one end of that East Coronelette Community Center to the other. I proved unequivocally between the two of us which one of us has balls and which one of us doesn't. Flash Flanagan doesn't want a piece of me. And that if that weren't enough, when he showed up in February to say goodbye to his three or four fans, the war machine hit him with a heart punch and dropped him. And he didn't get up from that. For all of his braggadocio, for all of his tough talk, Flash Flanagan knows that he's outmatched here in St. Louis. He knows there's a whole army of men that are better than him. The War Machine, Chris Hargis, Ken Casa, Superstar Steve Fender, Attila Khan, and yes, yours truly, because I'm the one, I'm the one that delivered the beating of his life to him. So let's not be fooled. Flash Flanagan's not coming back here in January or April or any time. He's going to keep floating around the lesser territories in Tennessee and Kentucky and Indiana and Puerto Rico where he has a shot because he doesn't have a shot here. So I just wanted to be upfront about that. I know Flash Flanagan's got a couple of fans out there. I'm not sure why, but they exist. And at the risk of telling you something you don't want to hear, I want to be upfront and honest with you. You're never going to see Flash Flanagan again, but rest assured, whenever we're able to have wrestling shows again, and I'm hopeful that it won't be too far away, 
you will see the Travis Cook organization. We will be back, and all of our fans will be able to enjoy our presence once again.